Where did we miss it? Where, where did the church fall off the boat? <laughs> well, basically, again, like I, I, I like to go back to the beginning of it. It was again the third century A.D. Uh, with Constantine and everything that he was allowed to implement, and everything that came out of the church. Uh, at that point, everything that was birthed into the church, we could only take what we learned. Mm -hmm. And so we take that and we continue to multiply that same thing. Instead of us really getting back to the spirit of God and realigning, many times, even though we, there would be a move of God and we would walk away from one thing, but we create another monster mm. because we really didn't go out by the, led by the Spirit of God in many instances. We are led by uh, infighting, hmm. um, anger. And so we start another tradition, another denomination. And you know, the Bible itself tells you that the traditions of men make the Word of God of none effect. Yeah. So we didn't go back truly to seek God and allow God to reestablish us. Because if you look at even in our Western culture, the way our day is established, God's day starts in the evening. Mm -hmm. See the, and you go back to the creation story, it says, and the evening and the morning right. were the first day. That's what it said. Okay. So we have in, in our arrogance and from our Western mindset, we've twisted and tried to shape everything around that culture. And it's not God's culture. We, we might as well know that Jesus Christ was a Jew. Mm. And he taught from that perspective. Those apostles taught from that perspective. They worshiped from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And the power was demonstrated from that perspective. So we've got to get realigned with the timing of God. We've allowed even our, our years to be out of line with the, with the timing of God. Um, you know, in the Jewish calendar. This is the year 5769. Mm -hmm. In our calendar is 2009. There's yeah. a difference there. That's a big difference. There's a difference there. And see, God's timing, whether we realize it or not, still is going to line back up with that. That's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So you would go as far as to say that because we're so out of a line with Jewish culture, that even the anointings and the power uh, that we saw demonstrated in the Bible are being affected because we're out of alignment. It's just like driving your car. If your car is out of alignment, does it drive the same? It doesn't drive the same. If your timing belt is loose mm. and if it's not operating properly, does that car operate properly? It doesn't operate. So until your anointing is lined up with the timing of God and the seasons of God, you know, it, it's not operating at its effectiveness. You know, the, God is not an Indian giver, as we would say in our culture. Right. The Bible says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. That's right. But is it working at its full capacity? Ah. Its full effectiveness. Ah. So would, would I be too far-fetched or would I be going too far to suggest to pastors out here that they need to implement Jewish culture, Jewish teachings, Jewish rituals, the feasts discussed in the Old Testament, as even as far as the teachings in Deuteronomy and Leviticus to the Jews, would I be going too far to say that pastors need to implement this in their churches? They need to understand, I believe, that those things are the truth foundation of the church. You know, everything that Paul preached, where the, Paul wrote most of the New Testament, right. and we call ourselves New Testament church. Right. But where did Paul get his writings from? Where did he get his teachings from? Let's just look at it. Let's just be real about this thing. Okay. Everything that he preached and taught, there it was. That's right. So, I mean, we can't discount that. No. And Paul was making it a point. He told you he had to be in Jerusalem for the feast. That's right. He told you throughout the scriptures. He had to be there. He had to be there. He was making it a point. 
Yes. Jesus made it a point. Yes. Even in the book of Revelation, when it talks about the millennium period and how that thousand year period, how people that survived the battle of Armageddon, whether they be in other countries from the West or wherever they were from, that they were required to come into Jerusalem during that millennium time to represent that feast. And so if that be the case, then it's very necessary, I feel, that in order for us to be a fulfilled church, that we understand the Jewish culture and Jewish ritual. We're going to have to understand it. Now, whether we literally implement it, I, I believe that Jesus is the fulfillment of the feast. And that's, yeah. and that's my personal, and I won't try to force that on anybody. Right. But we have to recognize them. Right. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Wow. I believe every one of those feasts is a representation of Jesus. I believe, you know, as the Bible says, he's the Passover lamb. Yeah. I believe Pentecost was the, uh, it was the implementation of the law on Mount Sinai with Moses. Ooh. And it was the implementation in, in the New Testament of the Holy Spirit into the earth. Okay. And um, the tabernacles is the end gathering. It is the last great revival before the coming of the Lord. Mm. And their Feast of Tabernacles was the, represented the end gathering of their harvest. Yeah. And ours represents the end gathering of the spiritual harvest. Yeah. So um, it's a future feast and it needs to be acknowledged that it is Jesus's feast. Mm. That's powerful. Here we go again, people. We're at the end of another segment and I hate to be here because he just flows so profoundly in the word of God. I know I've been blessed richly. I definitely know you're being blessed richly. Look, we're going to come right back and we're going to close this out, but I need you to stay put and don't move because we'll be right back. <laughs> 